Motorhead Garage, presented by Top Coat, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. You know, I work on a lot of shows where cars are being restored and there are a lot of muscle cars and the builders always tell me the tolerances back in the 60s, back when those cars were made, were terrible. It was a human being working on it, of course, and so the, the gaps between the, all the panels and everything were way off and they were inconsistent from car to car. But now the automotive industry has evolved, so there are robots involved in computers and bigger technology and that changes the cars. Now they're all repeatable and that changes the way rockauto.com does business. Right, you know, when we started out 20 years ago, we focused on just replacement parts, but over time, the accessory part manufacturers have improved their processes like, you, like the car manufacturers did. So you, you get a, something like a bull bar for the front of your, your truck, you know that, okay, it's supposed to bolt on. Well, the, the manufa car manufacturer put the holes in the right spot. They're the correct distances apart on, on the vehicle, and, and the, the bull bar manufacturer made their part exact to exact tolerances so it fits too. And this is cool because, you know, if you're mechanically inclined, you've replaced all the things on your car that you, that you need to do to keep it up to date, and now you can get down to the business of making it look cool. We have stuff as uh, simple as install like floor mats. You just plop them in. If you have your headlights or crazed or cracked or something, you can get replacement headlights that are original equipment style from rockauto.com, or you can get uh, custom headlights like these that are projector that make your vehicle look cooler. So now this opens rockauto.com to a whole bunch of people who just want something that looks nifty. Right, right. Yeah, we, we sell accessories now, um, bumpers, trailer hitches, lights, all, all sorts of fun things to customize your vehicle, make it look cooler. Time now for the lowdown with Magic Creeper. All right, there is no doubt you have seen one of these. It is a multi-tool. Now, nobody's carrying pocket knives around anymore. This thing has everything. It's got pliers, a screwdriver, uh, clippers, a nose hair trimmer, spork, who knows what's in these things. And you know what? You can think of the Magic Creeper as a multi-tool as well. Keep it in the back seat of your car, as I have here in the family truckster. And uh, it doesn't weigh anything. You can also use it as a blanket, by the way, if you need it in an emergency situation. And uh, we've got a bit of a situation. That's the reason I'm grabbing this. I ran across, maybe this has happened to you, ran across a plastic bag on the highway, just a, a shopping bag. And with your hot exhaust, sometimes it gets stuck under there. I didn't see it come out when I looked in my rearview mirror, so I suspect it's up under there in the exhaust somewhere. So we will use the Magic Creeper to get under this car. This works better than a conventional Creeper because there are no wheels, so you get a few inches of extra ground clearance, and some of us need it. Thank you very much. And it's uh, super simple to unroll the Creeper. First, you just throw it out there like you're bowling and sit your bottom on it, scoot it out a couple of inches, and then you're able to go under the vehicle. Now I'm gonna check under here to see where the problem is, the great thing, by the way, about the creeper is you can move left and right to inspect anything you need to underneath. You stay on top of the creeper, so you are not on the wet ground. You can roll over gravel, you can roll over tools, grass, anything. The creeper rolls over with no problem, and you won't even feel it if you're rolling over something rough. And guess what? Right up here by the catalytic converter, I just found the offending bag up underneath, and I got it before most of it melted off, which is super cool. Now my knees are as old as I am and that is pretty old and I am thankful for the Magic Creeper whenever I need it around my car or in the garage or just around the house doing all kinds of odd jobs. Be sure to check them out at magiccreeper.com and accept no imitations. Let me give you a scenario that everybody can relate to. You're going down the road, you hit the brake pedal, and bam, you start feeling a pulsation or a shimmy in the steering wheel. Probably resulted from lateral runout. I'll show you how to measure that real quick. Just go ahead and take your wheel off. Ferrari was nice enough to give us these studs, but if your rotor's loose, put some lug nuts on and secure them. I got a dial indicator set up right here, zeroed out, touching the rotor. Just simply go around and spin your rotor around. And what you don't want is any more than three thousandths. If you have more than three thousandths, well, guess what? That 3,000th goes around, that really doesn't cause the pedal pulsation, but it causes disc thickness variation. It's hitting the rotor, bam, bam, bam. When it does that, the pads go in and out, and you start to feel it. Well, you can just take a micrometer, you can go around the rotor in eight different places at the same difference. You don't want any more than five ten thousandths. That's less than a thousandths. And what that does, it gives you that pedal feel or that pedal pulsation. It's disc thickness variation. Now, how do you stop that? Well, don't over torque the lug nuts. Make sure that your surfaces are clean between your rotor and your hub and when you put everything back together use proper torque specifications because you don't want to go down the road and feel that pedal pulsation these two measurements along with those tips will help you avoid that do not touch that dial 
Do they make TVs with dials anymore? Anyway, don't go anywhere because Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat is coming back right after this. What happens to all the cars that wind up in accidents or finally just die? In the United States alone, about 12.6 million cars are recycled every year. Some cars are stripped for parts, others are worth more as scrap and head straight to the shredder. Just how much do auto salvage businesses in the U.S. make every year? A whopping $22 billion. Motorhead Garage, coming up right after this.